Hello friends, my name is Harrison, and I'm here to ask you a very important question. Have you watched any of my other videos today? Did you know that by watching only two of my videos each day, you help keep this fat cat in an unhealthy state of obesity? Look into his eyes and tell him you don't care that he meows like he's starving. You don't care that all he wants is more food. You just don't care enough about him to watch two short videos a day. What you're gonna see in this video is the absolutely insane power of the Mecha Base and the Accelerator. On every single boss that gave me trouble in the Highlands and Voidlands maps, these towers just annihilate them. Before we get started, make sure you hit that like button if you're looking forward to Halloween. First off, let me give a huge shout out to my two amazing teammates in this game. They brought the big guns while I just brought these little ones. Thank you so very much to 123457Porg and Dennis Daily Fan 2184 I couldn't have done it without you guys. One thing to note about the Mecha Base is that Below recently made this statement in the Paradoxum testing Discord. Mecha Base will not be releasing in the re-release update. It was left in the hardcore lobby on accident and has been used merely for testing moving units. None of the stats on it are the real stats as they're just testing stats. When the tower is released, it will have some major changes made to it. This is probably a good idea because nothing survives the mark when he's on the warpath. You're gonna see it basically shoot from across the map as soon as it spawns and it has insane health so some of those enemies that were a pain in my are killed so easily that hardcore isn't even a challenge anymore. Without the mecha base, you really have to strategize your towers to kill the slow bosses at wave 24 and then the shadow bosses on wave 25. And these zombies have killed me more than anything else in the game. Because if you don't have the right towers down when they show up, there's really no way to stop them. But what you'll see here is that a single mark will literally walk right through them. So there does need to be some sort of rebalancing. I like the idea of having a tower that's very expensive so it's hard to get and not a lot of people will have it, but it's really good. I think the pursuit Dude is like that. It's a really powerful tower with some limitations, so it ends up being pretty balanced within the game. One thing that might help balance the mech is to give it a placement limit of one or two, because I think right now it's four or five, which is just too many. And the mech base themselves are not that expensive to place, so I think making those cost more would be a decent nerf without having to cut their damage. As for the accelerator, I think it fits into the game well with how it's set up now. It's got this good balance where it doesn't seem to handle large groups of zombies well, but when it comes up against a powerful boss, then that's when it really shines. And that's what it was designed for. It gets pretty expensive towards the upper levels, so you can't really just spam them out everywhere. By the time I get like 5 to max level on a regular map, the game is basically over. Alright, you can see here that we're on wave 18, and the only real damage tower that we put down is my mini gunner. That's because my teammates are farming for those OP hardcore towers. Okay, Dennis gets his first mecha base down, and he immediately takes it to level 4. <laughs> oh my god, this update is so buggy. Where's the building? Level 4 mecha base is so OP that it's invisible. I'm invisible. All right, here comes our first mark of the game. I don't know why he's just walking. He should be dancing. Well, that was kind of lame. He didn't really get to attack anything. Okay, now we have another mark on the scene. I want you to watch what happens when he comes into collision with a shadow boss. If you've played hardcore, then you know how difficult those guys can be to kill. Watch this. He just walks right over him, and he keeps on going all the way to the entrance. Now we're at waves 24 and 25, and it's my opinion that if you can beat these two waves, you should be able to beat the whole map. We don't have the accelerator down just yet. That actually gets put down right at wave 25 when we fight the triple shadow bosses. This was a good team, so we already had the firepower we needed to kill the slow bosses. The military bases and the golden minis handle those. And this allows the mark to get to the shadow bosses with full health. So watch the mark not only shooting these bosses, but running into them head on, killing two and almost killing the third, just annihilating our enemies. The level four mark has 2000 HP compared to the level five military base only having 1200 HP. Ah, feast your eyes upon the mighty accelerator with all its tricks and magic powers. I really do like this tower. I actually got it myself right after this game. During the rest of the video, watch how it handles the really big bosses like the Gravedigger and the Fallen King, and watch how the mecha base does against the smaller enemies like the Fallen Titan. Again, just because those are typically the ones that are a pain in the butt.
check this out. This is what the mecha base is really good for. When you've weakened some of the stronger zombies, he can just come in and stomp on them to finish them off. Four mecha bases, all invisible. Invisible! Okay, now the Gravedigger's here, and this is when I think the Accelerator and the Mecha Base Towers really show their worth. We kill this dude before he even gets off this front path, and that's a combination of the draining power of the Accelerator Burst and the massive sudden damage the Mark does when he crashes into him with his 2,000 HP. Borg takes his Accelerator to level 5 before placing any of the others. Now that I've used the Accelerator, I wouldn't do that just because it's so expensive to get to level 5. I think you're better off having 3 or 4 at level 3 instead of waiting. Here's where you see the mark firing as soon as it spawns. <laughs> oh, that's just crazy. Okay, check this out. We're fighting the Molten Boss with four Mecha Bases and eight Accelerator Towers. How long do you think it takes us to kill him? A, 45 seconds, B, 30 seconds, or C, 20 seconds? Welp, if you notice that as soon as his name appeared, he had already lost 25% of his health, then you should have gone with C, 20 seconds. So he dies in about the same area as the Gravedigger, but he was even stronger. You're going to see this as a trend on this map if you're using these towers. Nothing really gets out of this front area up here.
Ah, oh, now the souls arrive. The mecha base's only weakness. The marks are gonna pass right through these enemies, as will the tanks from the military base. Lucky for us, the accelerator can ghost bust them into oblivion with no problems. Now we fight the strongest boss yet, the Fallen Swordmaster with 150,000 health. GG, too easy. I love when the Fallen King falls from the sky to stun the towers and all of the accelerators immediately target him. It looks so cool. to arrive at wave 50. Unfortunately, nothing crazy happens at the end of this game. The Void Reavers don't do somersaults like little kids on the playground. They really don't even get that close to killing us, so it wasn't as much fun beating this map as it was on the other hardcore maps that I made videos about. And this is my main issue with the mecha base right now. It robs the game of a sense of excitement because it does so much damage to everything. Sure, it's fun to win, but it's only fun if it's a challenge, and it definitely isn't using the mecha base right now. Making the tower more expensive or 
or having a lower placement limit would help to level the playing field without having to take away the unique damage stats that it has. I have a feeling that Below is going to end up bringing it closer in line with the military base so that it does just a little more damage than that tower. And of course, we kill the second Reaver right before he leaves his front area. Actually, I can see how it would be hard to beat this map without the hardcore towers, so I might try and do that. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see that tutorial, because I can do that, and I also have a guide for how to beat the Ancient Colosseum map with the same loadout that we use for beating Voidlands, so just regular towers with one person using an accelerator. And that's all for this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to smash that like button with your forehead, hit that subscribe button with your big toe, and turn on notifications however you can so you don't miss any of my upcoming amazing content. Go ahead and join my growing Discord community at discord.gg slash just Harrison things, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care, be safe, and never forget what I always say. Peace.